Konnichiwa, I'm John Hornick. Welcome to my Japanese Faves series where we'll cover every major type of Japanese food. This lesson is called Sake SMV or Sake Meter Value. Ignore it. Okay? Now, you can also take my uh, 104 lesson cooking course, which is called Learning to Cook Like a Pro One Small Plate at a Time. It starts off very easy, gets progressively more difficult, and ends with the ultimate challenge, which is actually five lessons in one. I also have several other special series such as Italian faves, Spain on a small plate, bonus lessons which are things like how to break down a chicken, sauces to die for, and impress your date. Now this lesson is about SMV or sake meter value. In Japanese it's known as the Nihon Shudo. Okay? I will call it probably both as we go on. SMV, sake meter value, Nihon Shudo. Now what it is in reality it's a measurement of sake in relation to the density of water. Right? So they're comparing the density of the sake to the density of water, and they're coming up with a number. Now, the, if, it's, if the sake is less dense than water, supposedly it is drier, or on the drier side. If it is more dense than water, supposedly it is sweeter, or on the sweeter side. Now, zero can be viewed as a neutral, between sweet and dry, but what it really means is simply that uh, if it has a, an SMV of zero, it really means that the socket has the same density as water. That's all it really means, okay? Now, a plus number, so if you have, say, um, plus one or plus five or whatever, that uh, socket is less dense than water, and supposedly it means that the socket is dry or drier. The higher the plus number, say plus eight, supposedly the drier the sake is. Now a negative number, which supposedly means that the sake is more dense than water, supposedly means that the sake is sweet or on the sweeter side. The larger the negative number, meaning like a minus eight or a minus nine, something like that, uh, supposedly the sweeter the sake is. Now this number is often printed on the back label of a sake bottle and it's often in sake menus in restaurants. But I took a look at all of the sake bottles that I have here, uh, and I, I probably have about uh, 10 different bottles, and almost none of them had the sake meter value on the label. That really surprised me, because uh, these labels, of course, were made for the American market, and uh, Americans tend to want to know what the SMV is. So I'm surprised to see that it wasn't on many of the bottles, but in fact, it wasn't. Now, in my experience, I used to rely on these numbers. I only ordered sake with a plus number. The higher the better, okay? And I never gave negative numbers, negative SMVs a chance. If it had an, a, minus, a minus number on the menu or on the bottle, I didn't order it. And I've since come to realize that I missed out on a, great, a lot of great sake that way. All right, now let's talk about how to view the SMV. Now, for people who are getting into sake and are interested in learning about sake, the SMV number or the uh, sake meter value is very popular. But now I ignore this number. Uh, and hopefully by the end of this video, maybe you will too. I try not to look at them actually if I have the willpower to do so, but in reality, I usually do look at them, uh, but I try not to. Now, why is it that I now ignore these numbers. Uh, the reason is because these numbers are really an unreliable indication of sweetness versus dryness. Right? Now, why do I say that they're unreliable? Well, for one thing, uh, as I said before, the SMV number is simply and only a measure of density of the sake in relation to the density of water. That's all it is, okay? But in addition to that, there are so many other factors that affect uh, apparent sweetness or dryness. Okay, well, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna talk about all of those factors. But what do I mean by apparent sweetness or dryness? Well, when you taste something, it will appear to be sweet or appear to be dry, okay? And uh, that is highly relative and it's highly subjective, right? One sake with an SMV minus two could seem equally dry to another sake with an SMV with a plus two, all right? Also, one sake with an SMV with a minus two may seem sweeter or drier than another sake with 
an SMB of minus two. Now I have a couple of sakis here today, and uh, I'm only going to talk about uh, I'm only going to talk about two. One of them is um, uh, a bottle called um, uh, the, the uh, Chokai San Mountain Chokai Nama. Now Nama means that it's an unpasteurized sake, okay? And this bottle says that it has an SMB of plus one. So that means it's only slightly less dense uh, than water. Okay, that's this bottle here. All right, now, uh, then I also have this bottle here, which um, this is the bottle that I used in my Bodai Moto lesson. All right, and this is uh, the Takacho Regal Hawk. And this says that it has an SMB of minus 20 to minus 30. Now, I've been drinking this sake since I opened it, and you would think that a sake with a minus 20 to a minus 30 SMB is gonna be super sweet. It's not, it doesn't taste sweet. It tastes maybe slightly sweet, but it doesn't taste as sweet as you might think it would with a minus 20 to minus 30 SMB. And I'm gonna tell you why when we get into uh, the other factors. Now, um, that, now, the one that had the plus one, well, what does that mean? Uh, you know, it, does it mean it's slightly dry? Okay, and as we get into this discussion of these, uh, of the other factors, you'll see that when, whether it has a plus one or a plus two really doesn't tell you anything, all right? Now, um, now, the closer that the SMB number is to zero, so for example, a plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, or a minus one, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. The closer they are to zero, the less they tell you, okay? And that's what most sakis are. Most sakis that you'll find in restaurants and on sake lists, they have a, an SMB number that's somewhere between zero and plus five, zero and minus five, okay? And the closer they are to zero, the less they tell you. Now, if you have a number that's way above uh, zero, you know, that's, that's gonna tell you it's probably gonna be perceived, it's gonna have a parent dryness to you. And if it has a, a number that's way below zero, like that uh, Regal Hawk that I just showed you, you might think that it's gonna be really sweet, all right? And, and that's more of an indication of sweetness or dryness if you have an extreme number in either direction. But uh, if it's close to zero, the less it means. The less accurate it is as a prediction of sweetness and dryness, the less reliable it is. And also think about the fine distinction between a plus one, a plus two, and a plus three. What does that really mean? All right, you see two, three bottles lined up. One of them has a plus one or one has a minus one. What does it really mean to have those numbers? It's really a fine distinction. All right, now, I'm gonna talk about the factors that, are, that affect whether a sake has a parent sweetness or a parent dryness. And I'm gonna talk about objective factors and subjective factors. Now let's start with the objective factors. Now let's talk about the first of the objective factors, which is acidity, okay? Now sake usually had, most sakes have a, an acidity of somewhere between point, well, I'm sorry, 1.0 and 2.0, okay? The higher the acidity, the greater the apparent dryness. The higher the acidity, the greater the apparent dryness, and vice versa. The lower the acidity, the um, greater the perceived sweetness. In other words, it'll seem a bit sweeter. Now, um, there's a guy named uh, John Gardner who, um, Gardner who wrote this book called uh, Sake Confidential, a behind the basics guide, I'm sorry, a beyond the basics guide to understanding, tasting, selecting, and enjoyment of sake. It's a great book. And he says that the acidity of a sake will, um, uh, can cause the SMV number to be uh, wrong by a factor of 25%, okay? 25% affected by the acidity. Now, let's get out this uh, Regal Hawk again. This is a great example. This Regal Hawk, as I said, has an SMV of minus 20 to minus 30, but it has an acidity of plus three. Very unusual. It's very unusual to see a socket with an acidity over uh, higher than plus two. So, so what's happening here? Remember, the higher the acidity, the greater the apparent dryness, okay? So even though this is, has, a, has an SMB of minus 20 to minus 30, is it has unusually high acidity, plus three. So they're balancing each other, right? So it's not gonna seem as sweet as you might think it would be because the acidity is higher. All right, now, uh, 
uh, let's see, where are we? Now, I mentioned before that um, uh, namas, and nama means that the sake is unpasteurized. Namas tend to seem a little sweeter than pasteurized sakes, okay? And Gardner says in his book, and I think I'm mispronouncing his name, it's Gauntner, sorry. In his book, he says that uh, the fact that a sake is a nama can also cause the SMB number to be wrong by a factor of about 25%. Another objective factor is brewing water. Now, sake is made of only three ingredients. Water, rice, koji, which is a friendly mold uh, called Aspergillus orze. I talk about it in several of my other lessons. And, and uh, it's those three ingredients, and plus yeast, okay? So most people all, uh, always say that sake is made with three ingredients, uh, water, rice, and koji, and then they say, oh, and yeast. So it's kind of, yeast is kind of a fourth ingredient. Um, but brewing water is very important. And in Japan, there are different sources of water throughout the country. Some of them are really revered. The, the water is very, very important. And uh, Japan's water tends to be softer than the water of the rest of the world on average, okay? However, soft water may make a sake seem sweeter. So uh, in Japan, all the water is relatively soft, but if you have a water that is a bit softer than the others, it may have greater apparent sweetness, okay? But this is a fine distinction because, because Japanese water in general is soft. Another um, factor, objective factor, is the method of making the koji. To make koji, what you do is you inoculate rice with the, uh, with the koji mold, and then you use that in the sake making process. And the way that you do that can affect apparent sweetness or dryness. Also, brewing style. Now, uh, in, uh, in Japan, there are uh, some styles that can be identified with certain regions. And the, the, the uh, sake that comes from Nagita and from the Nara region, these tend to be more on the dry side, right? And uh, sakes that come from other regions, such as Kyoto or Fushima, or from uh, Hiroshima, those tend to be a little bit more on the sweet side. So the brewing style can also affect whether the sake has apparent sweetness or dryness. Another objective factor is rice. Remember I said uh, that uh, uh, sake is made from rice, water, and koji, right? So uh, one of the rices that's made, that's uh, just for making uh, sake is called Yamadana Shiki. And this is called the king of sake rice. It's commonly used to make sake and it can result in a slightly sweeter sake. Right? Now, food, another factor. Um, the, the food that you have a sake with can affect its apparent sweetness or dryness. Salty food can increase apparent sweetness. And uh, Gauntner says that um, the food can also affect whether the SMB number is accurate by about 25%. Right? Temperature is another factor. Temperature of uh, drinking the sake. Now, a warmer temperature might make the sake seem sweeter. Now, many um, uh, finer sakes are meant to be drunk uh, chilled, uh, and so you might not be heating up a premium sake anyway. But if you did heat it up, it might have a greater apparent sweetness. So the same sake may taste drier or sweeter depending on the temperature, depending on whether it's chilled or room temperature or warm or even hot. And again, uh, Gardner says that uh, the temperature can affect whether the SMB number is accurate by, again, by about 25%. Now, um, I'll talk a little bit about subjective factors. Now, the first ones that I'll talk about are uh, obvious, okay? One person may think that a particular sake is sweet, Another person may think that that particular sake is dry, or all kinds of shades of gray in between, all right? And uh, one sake may seem sweet until you compare it to a sweeter sake. And at that point, it could seem either sweeter or drier by comparison. Right? And that's because there is really no standard as to what is sweet and what is dry. And certainly the SMV number is gonna tell you that because all it really is is a measure of the density of the sake in comparison to the density of water, right? And Gardner says that uh, the temperature 
I'm sorry, that, I'm sorry. Subjective judgment, subjective factors, right, in, in the tasting, they can af affect whether the SMB number is uh, accurate by about 50%. So, so far we've added up a bunch of 25% and a, and a 50%, and right, and you, and you take all of those together, and really the SMB number can be off by, uh, you know, what, over 100%, right? Now, uh, another um, subjective factor is aroma. Now, um, aroma, I say this is a subjective factor because different people will perceive aroma differently. It depends on your particular smeller, okay? Now, fruity aromas, they can make a sake seem sweeter. Okay? And then finally, we'll talk about the vessel that you drink the sake out of. And uh, uh, for example, if you were to use a glass like this, and I often use a ceramic cup called an ochoco, uh, but uh, there's a growing movement to use wine glasses for sake, partly because you can see the color better and, um, uh, and uh, the size of the glass can be relevant. Right now, older research Said that, says that there's a, a taste bud uh, for sweetness on the tip of the tongue, right? And uh, a glass with a narrow opening, a narrow opening like this, or even a narrower opening like uh, a glass for port, right? That, when you sip it, uh, they say, at least, that that's going to deposit the sake on the tip of your tongue. And if there is a taste bud for sweetness on the tip of your tongue, that can give you uh, a greater apparent sweetness when you taste it. Now, more recent research says that uh, the taste buds can sense all five tastes, sweet, salty, uh, bitter, and uh, sour, and umami, or I call it umami, or, or yumminess, okay? So, more recent research says that each bud can sense all of those flavors. But your buds, okay, your buds may be more likely to perceive sweetness or dryness. You might just be kind of made that way, right? And also your sipping style could affect that. If you are one who sips the sake and you take a little bit of it versus taking a much larger amount of it uh, to taste, that could also affect your perception of whether a sake is sweeter or drier. Now, all of these factors together really mean that the SMV or the sake meter value or the Nihon Shudo, they create potentially false expectations about whether a sake is going to be sweet or dry or how sweet or how dry it will be. The plus numbers probably mean that you will perceive dryness, okay? Uh, but negative numbers don't necessarily mean that you're going to perceive sweetness or very much sweetness. And again, that Bodai Moto that I was talking about earlier is a great example of that. It has an SMB of minus 20 to minus 30, and it doesn't really seem very sweet at all. Okay, now, not even a very low number means that you're going to you're going to uh, perceive uh, sweetness because uh, there are so many other factors as I've described, and acidity is one of them. And with that Bodai Moto, the acidity was really high. Okay. Now, in conclusion. Uh, I hope that this video uh, helps you understand why the Nihon Shudo or the SMB or the Sake Meter Value is unreliable, right? Uh, don't even look at it if you, can, if you have the self-control. Ignore it if you do look at it, right? Because there's so many other factors that go into whether a sake has apparent sweetness or apparent dryness. Just taste the sake, right? And give all sakes a chance. Now, please remember, subscribe to my channel, and thanks for watching.